or the Giga Chat edition. That would be funny and cool and have it have the same exact benefits as uh, EOD. Hey everybody, I just want to preface this uh, video with a couple things. Number one, an apology. I'm sorry this room is such a mess. I never use it anymore. Um, I'm usually outside working 12 hours a day now. And secondly, I know right now is a really dark time uh, for Tarkov and everybody's really mad at uh, Battlestate and Nikita for the uh, Unheard Edition and the features and benefits that it has. Um, I guess as well as some things that cheaters are doing where they're targeting people with this addition in the game, which is really unfortunate to hear that really upsets me because I'm someone, um, that gets targeted on, in the game on the regular. It's why I don't stream Tarkov anymore is because it got so bad that almost every raid I was hunted down by somebody flying in the air or under the map and killing me from under the map. So I just, it's one of the reasons why I don't stream it anymore and I'm, I'm really sad to hear that anybody with this edition of the game is now dealing with that that's very unfortunate but i have been uh, approached by multiple members of the community both gigantic and commenters saying that the community could really use uh my input on this situation and at first you know i thought you know let me stick to my guns and not get involved in drama i'd never have before I've never made a video like this, so I'm a little nervous going into it because I am going to say some things that most of the community is not going to agree with, but I can promise you that it's factual. And if in an emergency situation, I can provide proof, but I'm under an NDA for a lot of stuff still until Tarkov is released. When I first voice acted for Battlestate, I didn't read the NDA and I didn't, I, I just signed it. Because I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to be in a video game, finally, after 30 fucking years, you know? And I didn't read it, and the NDA says, I can't talk about stuff that's not released in the game until the game releases. Well, in the Unheard edition here, uh, some things that, are, that were under that NDA are now, I guess, either a part of the game or going to be a part of it. But there's things, there's things here in this Unheard edition that were never announced before. So I could never talk about them. Sorry, this is so run around. I, I don't do videos like this. I'm, my videos are usually all scripted and in character. So apologies for the rigmarole here. I don't even know how to pause the recording. There we go. So I'm going to bring up... Uh, all I really know to talk about are the two things that Nikita said on Reddit and then the actual edition itself with some of the features it has that I know people are really upset with. So let's get into it. Okay, I hope this shows up okay in the YouTube video and that I'm not doxing my porn or anything. I dox that I play Pokemon, whatever, who cares? So Nikita made this post on Reddit uh, five... I'm sorry, this is the wrong one. This is the one that happened a day ago. Uh, hello, Tarkov citizens. To honor the owners of EOD version and their uh, indelible... That is a very old English word. Indelible importance and role in the EFT universe. We plan to add the following unique items to EOD. So this is where... This is Nikita's first post when everybody got really upset about um, the unheard edition. So they thought, okay, well, let's add some more benefits to EOD, which is understandable. However, I will agree that, you know, maybe this should have been considered ahead of time. We'll just, we'll just put that out there. Okay. Basically, I'm not going to read every single one. You've already heard them a thousand times. Okay. We'll provide these changes and additions as fast as possible. Knowing battle state, their turnaround and that kind of stuff is rather quick. I would, wouldn't be surprised if you see this within the next month. They're usually good about that kind of stuff. Temporary access to PvE will be provided as soon as we reinforce server infrastructure. This is a real thing. I can tell you from experience by working with them um, because of their location. I don't know if it's because they're in Russia or that the company's based in EU, but because of where they are, servers for them. I don't know the exact amount, but it's a ton more than it is for someone in the U.S. or Canada. Uh, and this would apply if you were a company in Australia as well. The server costs are absurd if you're not in the U.S. But I know people are considering the uh, PvE mode uh, a DLC when Nikita is saying it's not. Um, this is one of the things people aren't going to want to hear. Um, the single player the single player was planned, at least from when I recorded USEC 3's voice lines in early 2019, because I recorded voice lines for it. I can't show them because of the NDA, but because now that the single player is announced, I can say that I recorded voice lines specifically for it, and uh, I think that's as far as I can go. I don't, I don't think I can talk about like things that happen in the single player, even though I made voice lines for them. 
but there are single player specific Josh voice lines. So I I, I think that's why Nikita is saying this isn't a DLC because I think they planned it from the beginning and it was supposed to be a part of, I guess, the whole game. But now apparently it's just EOD and the unheard of edition, which um, I will agree with the rest of the community. That's a little unacceptable, especially with the success of the single player mod, which apparently uh, you can stream on Twitch because Clean did it the other day. And through my Discord sources, this isn't me quoting Clean, through my Discord sources, people are saying that Clean talked to Nikita, and Nikita said there's no repercussions for streaming the single-player mod. Which is good to hear because I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Because like I said, I get hunted down and killed by cheaters almost every raid. So that's really all I have to say about this. Obviously, they are adding more pay-to-win stuff. Um, but there's also a lot of cosmetics. Uh, cosmetics are good, but... Like, access to offline PvE for EOD for six months, that needs to be forever. This isn't Star Citizen's ship insurance. And this high-priority matchmaking, either everybody gets it or nobody gets it. That's This shouldn't be a thing. This is a problem I've had with no pixel for the longest time, is the priority system. How come, you know, buttfucker69420 gets to get in before me just because he said a funny joke in front of the server owner? That was streaming to a thousand people. You know, how come somebody can spend more money and get into a match faster? That's just ridiculous. It shouldn't be like that. There's no priority line at Disney World unless you're disabled. You don't pay more money at Disney World to get into the disabled line to cut in front of everybody. I think they should either get rid of this completely or figure out a way to give it to everybody. I don't know. That's all I have to say about that one. So then uh, Nikita made another update. This one I haven't seen. This is new. This is this morning. I'm going to read this one for you guys. Let me clarify the situation in a little more detail regarding owners of EOD version and access to the cooperative mode and also other issues. Maybe he touched on some stuff that I just said. We'll see. First of all, PvE game mode is not DLC. DLC, in our understanding, is the major additions to the game, including various functionality and content that are released after the official release of the game as a theme DLC pack, like Scav Life DLC, which they've planned forever, uh, for example, which will add a lot of new mechanics and content for Scav gameplay and leveling. Um, I don't know too much about Scav Life DLC. I didn't record any voice lines for it, not that I can think of. I don't think so. Secondly, the specifically the specific functionality of the PVE mode is necessarily located entirely on a separate network infrastructure. I don't know why it has to be like that. I feel like it can be client side and the clients can just sync up when you play with your friends and when you play with your friends, one of you is the host. I think that's how the single player should be. Because you don't have to worry about cheaters in single player. If you're going to if you are going to cheat in single player, you're only ruining the experience for yourself. Um, I think they should look into um, client hosting for this. I don't think this is necessary. These are unnecessary costs. Uh, it can't be that hard to code. If it is, then it'd be cheaper to hire somebody to figure it out for them than just paying for this bullshit forever. Once Tarkov is out, they got to pay for these servers forever until the game shuts down. If it doesn't shut down from this fiasco. We've observed your dissatisfaction and decided that the functionality of the PVO will be available for free to all owners of the EOD version at the release of the game when the server infrastructure will be improved to the required capacity. Again, like I said, I think everybody should have it. Or everybody's just going to play the Tarkov mod that wants to do single player. It's as simple as that. Just like people that want to role play in Grand Theft Auto V use 5M instead of GTA Online. And you know what Rockstar did with that? Rockstar bought the people that made 5M and then said, okay, now we own you. Now you can do whatever you want. So Battlestate, I mean, I could just call Nikita and tell him this, but if you guys watch this video, maybe get with the mod makers and endorse them. And then you won't have to do this at all. You won't even have to make the single player. Just get with the guys making the mod and be like, all right, we're going to buy you out. You work for us now. Here's how the single player is going to be. Now you have the opportunity to test this mode by purchasing the Unheard edition of the game or upgrade to this version. We also decided to give a 50% discount when upgrading to the Unheard version uh, from the EOD version. So this was a... I I can see that this was... They, they were trying to do a, a good move here. 
like a, a good faith move. But I think all this does is admit that it shouldn't have been that expensive in the first place. And if you're going to make something cheaper for EOD people, then you're also kind of admitting that EOD people were already entitled to this in the first place. That's the way I see it. That's the way my mind works. And I'm assuming it's the way most of everybody else's does too. I think if you had EOD, you should have gotten this version too. And this version should have just been an incentive for people that didn't have EOD to get it and get the benefits from it. And they'll still miss out on the stuff from EOD because they didn't get EOD. But Unheard has still got some pretty good stuff. I think its stash size is even bigger than EODs, which is bullshit. That shouldn't have been a thing either. Um, we plan to send one free left behind edition key to everyone who has already upgraded to the unheard edition at the old price from the EOD version. So if somebody buys unheard, they can give a copy of left behind, which I think is the basic edition of the game. I'm not entirely sure. Let's look. Nope. Standard is standard. Left behind is the $80 version. So, okay. You get the bigger stash with left behind. But, I mean, why not just make Unheard cheaper then instead of just giving away two copies of the game? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about marketing. Um, moreover, so that any player of any version of EOT can have the opportunity to test PvE mode, we want to add the ability to purchase a separate early access to this mode. For EOD owners, there would be a 70% discount on the purchase of the early access to PvE. It would be interesting to hear your thoughts on this idea. I think it should be free for everybody. I think it should be free for everybody, and you should take my advice on making it client-side and client hosted instead of paying for all these servers. Have the client save all of the data. The game would run better too. And don't worry about having servers for co-op mode. Because you know 95% of the people are going to play this by themselves. They're not going to fucking play with somebody else. I think it's the solo players that want the offline Tarkov mainly to get away from cheaters and mainly just to not have to deal with other people. Regarding special items from her version, we plan to make uh, restrictive or balancing changes for these items. Yeah, I would just remove them. I would just remove every pay-to-win aspect, which we'll go through here, of Unheard, and change the fucking name of it to, like, Ultimate Supporter Edition. Like, you just get this if you want to support the game. That should have been what they did from the fucking start, has been honest. Look, it has no upvotes. Even if I upvoted, it wouldn't make a difference. Okay, well, it did, but whatever. Yeah, they should have been transparent and been like, hey, we need more money. There's a new edition of the game, and it just changes your fucking icon in the game. So people know you gave us more money. That that They should have just been honest with that and not done this whole facade of adding all this other stuff. And EOD owners could have got it for an additional 50 bucks just to change their icon from a crown to whatever the little swirl is now. And I still want my red microphone on my account, Nikita, by the way. Okay, so here's the stuff that the Unheard Edition adds and there's a couple things I can touch on that's probably going to upset people as well. But it's just the truth. It's all I can tell you. This is every other version. This is every other version. This is now EOD, the co-op mode. Uh, the stash. I don't I don't know if this is the same size as EOD stash, 10 by 72. Holy fuck. It's like... Okay, it's way bigger than the EOD stash. Holy shit. That's got to be like the, the stash that you can buy. The additional stash. That's... EOD stash is already big enough. This is wild. Unique in-game ID. That's the little blue swirl, I think, now, instead of uh, the golden crown. Expanded PMC pockets. So here, this is one of the things I can tell you from experience that this was always a thing. Um, the bosses that have bigger pockets, it's always been eight. You've always been able to have that as a PMC. They just never added a way into the game to do it officially. But it's always been there. Um, I don't know if they planned on monetizing it like this. I was kind of always hoping that your character's clothing would impact your pocket size. All I can say is that this has always been in the game. That's all I can say on that. Uh, increased fence standing. I don't really think anybody cares about that. Scav karma is kind of easy to get now. More slots on the flea market. Um, yeah, that kind of sucks. The flea market grind when you're not a cheater is kind of shitty because all the cheaters um, monopolize the uh, flea market terribly so that sucks unique in-game melee weapon um, from what i can see is it's an asset uh flip of a knife that's what people think i don't personally think that uh, battle state spent a lot of money on a big machine that 
uh, does a 3D scan of weapons, uh, knives, guns, uh, whatever, and then they go in and add their own textures to it. I generally don't think Battlestate flipped an asset. I generally think they just took the real asset and scanned it and then polished it up a little bit. I, I don't I, I and I have good faith in Battlestate that they didn't do that. Increased mail retention time. I've never really lost anything I've really wanted from an insurance return. I almost never use insurance anymore. I treat every map like it's labs. And uh, I have more cash in game now because of that. It is harder to level up Prapor now because I don't buy anything from him. Uh, insurance was kind of the way I used to, but I really just don't use it. A uh, free access to all subsequent DLCs. I don't think anybody's outraged about this. EOD already did that. Uh, ETS, ED, EOD already did that. So uh, here's where the shit hits the fan. Okay. Gamma already had that. Weapon case. Yeah, that's a big deal. Lucky Scab Junk Box. It's like my first 20, 25, 30 raids to get that. Uh, ammunition case. Yeah, those are super handy early on. So here's the uh, additional equipment for USEC characters. Oh, that was bear. Okay, so this, this is for USEC. So the same thing in USEC variant. Uh, but let's get down to uh, where you start with your skills. Um, it's always nice to start at a higher level than everybody else. Yeah, I don't even know if in like the 40 or 50 raids I even played this wipe, if any of these are even level three. So that's that's a big start. Uh, Co-op mode, uh, unique armband. Does anybody care about that? So here, so this is the, kind of the whole point of the video. This unique radio electronic item, Mark of the Unheard. It's equipped in the special slot. It gives a 50% discount when using cash services and raids. Insured equipment returns faster. With six plus fence reputation, scavs won't shoot first and ranges over 60 meters away. So, so this one and the distress signal device. Well, let's finish it, I guess. I don't know very much about this this mark of the unheard, but the distress signal is the one I, I do. So I apologize for the misinformation right there for a second. Uh, ability to build a unique zone in the hideout. Uh, the distress signal device. When the item is activated, it produces a, blight fl a bright flash as well as a loud sound signal. Once activated, all players on your friends list will receive a notification they can join your raid to help you. So I don't know what's been said about this so far. I, I've only watched like a one peg video on the whole situation. So what I can tell you, doing the voice lines, is that in 2019, I recorded voice lines for this. On January 2nd or 3rd, whenever I did this, I recorded voice lines for a radio that your character uses to call in help. And when you use this radio, your character will speak into it. At least Josh will. I don't know about any of the other ones. But Josh talks into the radio and cries for help. So I can promise you that this was at least planned. But I don't know if they ever planned on monetizing it like this back in the day. I can't show you the voice lines for it because I don't know if it's in the game yet. Uh, if it is, you already heard the voice lines. If they even used them. Like I said, there is like 600 unused voice lines I also recorded for this game. But I did record voice lines for a device that calls people for help. So what do I think um, in this situation as a whole? Um, it sucks for me because Battlestate has been nothing but good to me. So I know there's a saying for it when, when someone's been good to you but terrible to everybody else. They're, they're, you see it through like a different lens or some shit. But um, Battlestate has been there for me when uh, I really needed help. Uh, I am still suffering terribly from this career change. I just cannot, I cannot get any kind of good luck with my career change right now. Everything I've tried to do has not worked out. And I, I have been in uh, very bad situations this year, financially. And I reached out to Battlestate and I said, Listen, guys, is there anything I can do, anything I can do voice acting wise uh, for some cash? And uh, that's where the field guide came from. They paid me to make the video, the, the field guide narrations. Uh, they paid me more for those videos than they paid me to play the fucking character in the game five years ago. So it's hard for me to get so upset at Battlestate like everybody else is over this. 
when they've been nothing but good to me. But it also doesn't mean I'm going to take their side. I can't take their side. I see how some people are getting screwed by this. And it's it's really unfortunate. And uh, the retweet about the other game that was a ripoff never should have happened. Um, I will say that. That's, that's not um, something we should consider. Um, Battle said, if you want someone to manage your Twitter that you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff with, um, I got you. You can email me anything and I'll post it on the Twitter within seconds, just like I answer your emails within seconds when you need help with the uh, other stuff we work on together. I guess what I can close with is that I, I apologize for this, guys. I never knew this was going to happen. Um, I really hope they... I really think what they should do is refund everybody that's gotten this so far, change its name to Ultimate Supporter, or the Giga Chat edition, that would be funny and cool, and have it have the same exact benefits as uh, EOD, sell it as an event item, maybe have a Giga Chat event in-game where scavs are all fucking high-level and wear good gear for a week, and then sell this for a week, and just have it change your little logo in-game so people know that you supported Battlestate and the development of the game just a little more than EOD did. You know, I don't know. I wish I had the answers. This is why I don't complain about a lot about stuff anymore because I don't like to complain if I don't have an answer for, for anything. But like I said, guys, I'm sorry. This sucks. Um, I wish I had better news for you. Um, you know, kind of being like the closest, I guess, you have to an insider with Battlestate nowadays. I haven't spoken to Nikita directly about this yet. I don't want to bother him in the current shitstorm. But I do have faith that they'll do the right thing. They always have in the past. When they've done something stupid, they've always fixed it. At least from what I can remember. Okay? I've been out of the loop for a long time. But I have faith that they'll fix this mistake. I really do. Anyway, that's all I can tell you guys. I'm sorry to those that thought, you know, they need to hear from me that I was going to have some, you know, enlightening disposition with this whole thing. But I just don't. That's all I know, is that the little the little overpowered radio was planned. I did voice lines for it, and the co-op mode was planned, and I did voice lines for it. That's all I got, guys.